people always say how do you do it all you're a superwoman I am NOT superwoman far from it I have struggled I have cried believe me <laughs> many times um, navigating twins navigating a full-time job at the time navigating business and now I run Clever Girl Finance full-time hey everyone this is Bola Shukumbi I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance and welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV so in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the challenges I face as a mom running a business and this video is going to be more personal slash chatty and the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I get a lot of questions from YouTube Instagram and from the women in the clever girl finance community who are running businesses or interested in starting businesses and they're curious as to how I navigate my own life with kids as a mom having a family and running a full-time business so I just wanted to share what I struggle with and the things I've learned on my journey before we get into the video if you haven't already subscribed to this channel please do and hit the like button so that other people can find this video and this channel as well. And if you are not familiar with Clever Girl Finance, stop by the website. We have new content every single day and we have over 30 free courses to help you as you work on your journey to financial wellness. So let's get into the video. So I started this business, Clever Girl Finance, after I had my twins. My twins were under two years old. I think they're about 13 to 18 months old when I started Clever Girl Finance. And I had had prior businesses prior to this one. However, when you don't have kids and you're running a business, um, even if you're working full time, it's kind of easier. I'm not saying it's easy to run a business, but it's easier when you don't have kids to kind of plan your schedule, work longer hours, and just get up and do things whenever you need to get them done. However, when you have kids, for those of you who are moms who are watching, you know that it's an entire different ball game. And I started my business with twins. And I started my business, Clever Girl Finance, because I was in this space where I was feeling unfulfilled. I wanted to do something that mattered. I, you know, I didn't necessarily love my job, even though I liked what I did. And I think a lot of that had to do with postpartum depression and just trying to find myself in that space, becoming a new mom, not just to one, but to two babies. It was very overwhelming. It was very challenging and I just wanted to be able to do meaningful work when I went back to work And so the idea for Clever Girl Finance was born when I you know shortly after I'd had my baby And one of the first things I really struggled with was self-care um, Taking care of myself and I had struggled with that prior to even starting Clever Girl Finance You know when you have twin babies you are always busy um, My kids were not good sleepers at all they were up um, at the beginning every one and a half hours and so I was perpetually exhausted I hadn't made a lot of time for myself and then here I was you know a year into being a twin mom talking about I want to start a new business so I was really struggling with self-care because I wasn't sleeping a lot I was working full-time at my job and I was trying to get this business off of its feet and I was really passionate about the idea of helping women with their finances and so I was up early you know with my kids when they woke up trying to work when they were sleeping and I was perpetually exhausted and that started to wear on me I was just always tired I was always quick to get upset you know I was very kind of like touch and go with people around me and that was really because I wasn't taking care of myself and so I still face challenges with self-care right as with every mom and every entrepreneur but I've learned how to be more intentional about taking care of myself and I've learned how to create limits and boundaries. I know I have to stop here um, and I have to remind myself, I have to sometimes, you know, figure out ways to force myself to stop, but that's something I'm being more intentional about. It's about making time for yourself, even if it means setting reminders on your phone to alert you that, hey girl, it's time to take a break. Maybe that's what you need to do because that's what I do for myself sometimes. And it can be hard because when you're a mom, you're doing all the things, especially if you're working full time and trying to run a business like I was you know you're taking care of the kids you're taking care of the house you're taking care of the meals you're working you know I'm trying to meet your deliverables and your project at work and then you're trying to build this business and then you're the everything for the business you're doing the marketing you're doing the branding you're doing everything and so 
just giving yourself that time to rest and recoup is so important because when you're rested, when you have the energy, you're able to do more. And what I realized when I wasn't really focused on taking care of myself was that I could continue going, I could continue working, I can continue doing the things, and then I would have this big crash and then I would recover and then continue to work and continue to do the things. But I wasn't doing the things for my household, for my job, my business, at my best element. It wasn't my best work. And I realized that when I would just take a day or a weekend to just rest and not work and just focus on, you know, doing the least so that I could recover, by the next Monday or, you know, once those few days had passed, I was rejuvenated and I was doing good work. I was doing my best work. So self-care is so important if you're a mom and you're running a business, working full time, you know, it's so important to prioritize your self-care. The second thing I struggle with as a mom is balance. And this is something I've always struggled with and I continue to struggle with balance. And balance is just basically prioritizing work, prioritizing family, prioritizing all the other things that I want to do in my life that are not work or family related. And it is a struggle, right? People talk about work-life balance all the time. But to me, that is just a complete myth. It doesn't exist. You have to create some sort of sense of balance um, that works for you. And so I would find that, you know, I would go to work full time. I would come home and hurry my kids around and get them ready for bed. Um, I would get their bottles ready before they would wake up and I would pour myself into work. And then when they would wake up, I would feed them, change them, put them back, work a couple more hours, and then go to bed for a couple hours and then wake up, get my kids ready, take them to daycare, and then head to my full time job. And that was just not sustainable. And I was all over the place. I didn't feel good about the fact that I was perpetually rushing my children. I didn't feel good about the fact that I was, you know, like just all over the place basically. And so I had to figure out how to create some sort of schedule that works for me. And a lot of moms will say, yes, if you're running a business, you have a family, um, you're working full time, you have to have a schedule and that is true. But sometimes when you hear people tell you their schedules, you're like, oh my God, that could never work for me, right? People's schedules, I think, are unique to them. And so for me, what I decided was that when I started pursuing creating my own sense of balance, when I started pursuing creating my own schedule, I set it up in a structure that made the most sense for me and not based on what everybody else was doing or what, what, what seemed to work for other people. And so for example, I told myself that I would have to go to bed by a certain time at night so that I could function the next day, so that I could be present for my kids, so that I could be present at work. And so if I was going to go to bed early, then I would wake up earlier to try to get my work done for my business before I packed my kids up and before I went into the office. And so I started waking up at 4 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. and I would work for a couple hours and then get everyone together and then go to work and then come back and try my best to go to bed early. Um, that didn't always work. There are many times where I just completely blew the schedule found myself exhausted again because I went back into my old habits, but I was intentional about making sure that I was pursuing that balance, that schedule that made sense for me. So if you are a mom, um, I really want to encourage you to figure out how to um, create a schedule that makes sense for your lifestyle. And one really important part of creating a schedule that makes sense for your lifestyle is by focusing on the important work. Um, and I had to realize that over time because there are many, many things that will take your time. There's always someone that wants to work with you, someone you want to work with, someone you want to meet, someone your, something your kids need help with, dinner to make, laundry to do. There's always something to take your time. With your business, there's hours that you can spend doing research, working on marketing, updating your social media, all these different things, especially at the beginning stages before you have a team. And so focusing on the important work is really helpful because it helps you prioritize what really matters for that day, for that week, for that month, and even though the other things may seem attractive, you will be okay letting those things fall to the side because you have done the most important work. And even today now that I run my business full time and I have a team, um, I still focus on focusing on the important work. And that's something that I'm prioritizing even more so as I look to doing things outside of my family and outside of my business 
for myself. So focusing on the important work is really, really helpful. And also take the help that you can get when you can get it. And so when I first started running Clever Girl Finance and I was still working full time, one of the line items in my budget before I would allow myself to quit my job was to ensure that when I did quit, that runway I had saved for myself. So I put aside about 18 months of money to cover my financial obligations because that's just who I am. I like to have that peace of mind about having money in the bank and knowing that I was going to be quitting my job was a huge, huge, like I went through many, many mental anguishes about is that a word but anyway I went through many mental conversations battles about do I do this do I leave my really good paying job but I built into my budget the line item for childcare to allow me to be able to pay for a babysitter for a nanny while I was working or running my business full time. And I did this at the expense of being able to pay myself a salary many, many times. Um, and so, but the reason why it was so important for me to do that was because having that help, having that support helped me achieve that sense of balance. And for everyone, that might not be an option. You may not be able to get the babysitter, especially right now in a pandemic where we're all being extra cautious. Um, I don't have any help with my kids right now, but if you have help from a parent, from a sibling, from your spouse, from your partner, take it. When I first had my kids, I was that mom that wanted to do everything herself. And I carried that habit of wanting to do everything myself over when I started my business and I was still working full time and it was just so unsustainable. And so I had to humble myself. I really did. <laughs> and I had to accept the help and understand that sometimes people are not going to do things the way you like them as perfect as you would want them, but they're there to support you. And the help is necessary because it can allow you to work an extra hour in your business. It can allow you to get that hour nap you need to be rejuvenated, to take care of your kids. And so if you have a help that you can leverage, take the help and use that time for your self-care or to do specific things, important work in your business um, and to achieve some sort of balance. So there's no perfection when it comes to balance or schedule. It's about you know making what you have work for you in the best way that you can make it work for you. Another thing I struggle with, especially as my kids get older, um, is mom guilt. And mom guilt is real. It's feeling like you're not always present for your kids. It's feeling like you're not there. You're spending too much time working. You're not able to play with them all the time. And I really struggled with that mom guilt because while I have been there for all my kids' big moments, um, there are times when my kids say, mom come play with me and I'm like oh I have to work I have to do this I have to do that and when I reflect back on those moments I start to feel really guilty I feel guilty um, I would feel guilty that I couldn't pick them up from school every single day when I was working full-time I would feel guilty dropping them off at daycare when I was working full-time I would feel guilty when I was hurrying them off to bed so I could you know spare a couple hours to work on my business um, after hours and so one of the things I realized is that mom guilt is always going to be there. There's always a reason <laughs> to, to feel guilty about something when it comes to your kids. And when you hear their cute little voices ask you to do something or tell you something that you can't, you know, you can't do right away, that guilt compounds even more. But as my kids have gotten older and they see me work, one of the ways that has helped me manage my mom guilt is being intentional. So going back to, you know, having my boundaries, creating a sense of balance, having a schedule so I can prioritize a certain amount of time with my kids. Um, but also as I've gotten older, it's involving them in what I do, is showing them the work that I do and helping them understand um, what I do and not just shooing them off when they come into my office. And for me, that's really important, especially for my daughter to see her mom working, to see her mom earning money. Um, for me is is huge because I got to observe my mom doing that. My mom would take me when she was going to her side hustles, when she was going to her businesses. I would sit with her in meetings. I even sat with my mom in her college class. And so involving my children in what I do, showing them the work I do, showing them my business, showing them, you know, things like my books, the website, all help me involve them and spend more time with them as opposed to shooing them away from my office when I'm working and then feeling extra mom guilt. And so there's no perfect way to manage mom guilt, but I think if you just find ways to dedicate time 
and dedicate having experiences with your children and also having conversations with them as to this is why mommy is busy. Um, things like that can be very helpful in managing that mommy guilt and that's what I found in my own experience. And then finally another thing I struggled with as a mom is relationships and this is my relationship with my spouse, my relationship with my family, relationship with friends, etc. and even making new friends. Um, when you are a mom and you're just completely occupied, especially when your kids are very young, you have a newborn, you know, I had twins, um, it can be difficult to have energy <laughs> and not be so exhausted after dealing with your kids to navigate, maintain, build relationships. Um, it is extremely helpful if you have a partner or a spouse that is involved, right, because they help kind of carry some of the weight of being a new mom, of taking care of kids and things like that. But when your focus is on your kids, going to work, on your business, um, your relationships sometimes can suffer. And I had that, you know, with my spouse, especially at the beginning stage of starting my business, where I was just so excited and so all consumed about my business that every spare moment I had, I wanted to work on my business. And I realized I was spending less time with my partner, having fewer conversations. And I had to correct that because I started to realize that void um, I realized that in a way we were getting distant because there was other things filling that gap like kids, right? Um, <laughs> work and business. And even with friendships, you know, I found myself being out of touch with a lot of friends because all my hours were spent with my kids, now my partner, my job, and my business. And so when I started to realize early on starting my business that this was impacting my relationships, I had to be intentional about spending time with my husband, doing things, having experiences with him, spending time with my kids, intentionally reaching out to friends to plan lunches, to plan dinners. Right now it's planning FaceTimes and Zoom calls or texting each other or you know doing FaceTime groups or WhatsApp, whatever it might be, but being intentional because those relationships that you have with your partner, with your kids, with your family, with your friends, they are incredibly valuable. And life goes by so quickly. And part of the beauty of life is having experiences with people that you love. Um, to me, that is more meaningful than any business I build, than any job I have. And when I'm just overworking and overfocused on, you know, things like, business and marketing and et cetera, et cetera, growth, 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 I started to feel that void. And I started to ask myself, what's the point of all this if I cannot be around people I love, if I'm not able to maintain my relationships? And so I have reprioritized my relationships and I'm constantly reminding myself to prioritize all of my relationships, like I mentioned, with my husband, with my kids, with my family members, with my friends, so that I can stay in tune with them, so that I can have experiences with them, and so that I can have memories, right? I can build memories and look back on them and remember the great times I had with my husband, with my kids, with my family, because you're not gonna look back really and remember that night at 2 a.m. where you were working on this marketing thing. I mean, really, you know, so relationships is something that I have struggled with, but now I am being um, very, very intentional about prioritizing my relationships. So as a mom running a business, it can be extremely challenging. In fact, not can be, it is extremely challenging and I get it because I've been there. Um, but, you know, I have just focused on being more intentional about my self-care, being more intentional about my relationships, being more intentional about creating balance for myself, and being more intentional about managing my mommy guilt. So I would love to know what kind of challenges you're facing as a mom running a business. Leave them in the comments below. Um, but I would also want to encourage you that you are not in this alone and don't feel like you have to isolate yourself. Um, if you need help, take the help, seek out the help, um, focus on doing the important work like I mentioned and let the other things that are not quite priority fall to the wayside and that's okay. You know, maybe sometime in the future you can get back to them but focusing on that important work can just really help you continue to prioritize. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. You know, people always say, how do you do it all? You're a superwoman. I am not superwoman, far from it. I have struggled, I have cried, believe me. 
many times um, navigating twins navigating a full-time job at the time navigating business and now i run clever girl finance full-time i was able to um, leave my job and transition into full-time different story um, about two years after i started the business and so i'm in this space where you know other things find ways to fill the void to fill your time growing a business building a team but i'm just being more intentional right with prioritizing and making sure that i'm i'm just keeping my sanity through this journey and doing the things that give me joy, you know, being around my friends, being around my family when possible. So yeah, feel encouraged. You're not alone. I know many moms are on this journey. We're about to start this journey and it is totally possible to build a successful business as a mom. You just have to come up with that balance, that schedule that works for you and don't feel that you need to do all the things immediately pace yourself, do things in your own time. So yeah, that is um, <laughs> my chatty video. If you guys want more videos like this on the topic of business or being a mom, leave a comment below and let me know what you would like to hear about my life as an entrepreneur or as a mom. I am happy to share. And like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, stop by clevergirlfinance.com, check out all our incredible content. We have free courses, free worksheets, new articles on the site every single day and if you don't already follow clever girl finance on instagram please do i will talk to you guys in the next video bye